Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana. And if you're thinking that I'm looking, looking a little extra today, it's because we're making an extra cute um, add-on for a garment. And that is, let me show you, this super cute Peter Pan collar. Now this is of course um, a style that's been around for a long time. We've seen this on royal babies from like the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, it seems to be a really strong trend that has come back in children's wear. And it's also really fun for um, adult clothing as well. Um, if you have a pattern and you feel like you wanna add on a Peter Pan collar, this is the video for you. And as a bonus, this collar is actually removable. So if you have um, you know, a garment that has just a plain round neckline and you feel that you want to make it a little extra, we have the project for you. Um, if you are just looking to add the Peter Pan collar to a garment that you're making and you don't want it removable, we will provide instructions for that as well. But if you want to add this additional little insert that will hold the collar in place for another garment, um, the instructions will be there for that as well. So for this project, um, there's all kinds of different materials that you can use. We used a really beautiful eyelet, um, but you could use a lace or just a plain fabric, even a print. Um, you could put um, a little bit of extra trimmer on the edge of your collar or even do some machine embroidery. The options are all up to you. Um, I want to invite you, if you're enjoying this content, um, please follow us. It's as easy as that. You can subscribe to this channel to get lots of content about sewing, crafting, um, home decor, knitting, quilting. We try to have it all and we try to make it um, accessible for beginners as well. Uh, please follow us on social media with Facebook and Instagram. There's some great content there as well. Um, I think that's all I want to say. I'm really excited about this project. I think it's a really great trend. Um, so I want to invite you to sew true and be you. And now we're going to take a look at the materials that we need. Like usual, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the materials that we need for this project. Now, the main thing that I'm the most excited about is this really sweet um, eyelet that we're actually using as the main fabric for our collar. Uh, this one has a really, really sweet little kind of fish motif on it, so that's really fun. Unfortunately, not available on the website, but you can find it in our brick and mortar stores. Um, the other thing that we need um, as a bonus in this video, we're gonna look at underlining. And uh, we'll explain that later, but basically I've got a lightweight um, cotton lawn for that. And that is on our website. And that, if you're looking for cotton lawn, is item 17318. And then finally, um, I am look I'm using um, as a mock bodice, uh, this beautiful Belvedere cotton. It's not in this color, um, but this color is available on our website. Um, it's a really beautiful 100% cotton sateen, really good for children's clothing, um, great for costumes, great for kind of heirloom sewing. And this color is uh, 16327. So that's the fabrics that we're using. Um, I'm also gonna be using some fusible interfacing to give the collar a little bit of body. And this is our Presto, um, just the regular weight woven fusible interfacing. Uh, we are using a pattern, again, um, this is, you can use your own pattern. It's just, if you're interested in the pattern that we're specifically using, this is McCall's uh, M6304. We'll be using a size four if that helps gauge the, um, the scale of what we're doing. Um, of course, we'll need some sewing thread to match our main fabric. I've got some sewing pins. I have scissors for paper and scissors for fabric. Do not interchange them. I've got some little sew-on snaps that we're gonna be using. Uh, this'll make the collar a little bit more of a safety thing instead of a button um, or a clasp um, that if, if there's any pressure on the collar, it'll release. Um, of course, I've always got <laughs> a beautiful pink pencil. Yours doesn't have to be pink, but if it is, you're very lucky. And an eraser. Um, I've also got a ruler, just something that we can use to gauge the seam allowances for our project. And we're also, I'm, I've got some craft paper that I'm going to be using to make the pattern. So once you've got all your materials with you, we can move on. So the first thing I've done um, is I've copied, actually um, glued 
the tissue paper for the bodice front and the bodice back to some craft paper just to give it um, a little bit more uh, strength and stability. I'm gonna take the bodice back. Um, this one is not cut on a fold. I'm going to line up the back edge of the pattern with the edge of my craft paper. I'm gonna trace that pattern piece out, just kind of going carefully around the neck curve. I'm just gonna mark the points of the shoulder seam because that's gonna be a straight line. So I'll just draw that with a ruler. I'm going to carefully mark out the armhole, although this is less crucial for the collar, but I just wanna make sure that I've got kind of the scale of my pattern piece. I'm gonna mark that side seam with um, just a dot and then I'll fill that in with a ruler. Same thing with the bottom, just looking at the bottom um, side seam, just marking that with a dot and then I'm gonna mark that bottom seam at the center with a dot. I'll remove my pattern piece. Like I said, I'm just gonna grab my ruler and finish filling in the straight lines. That'll just give us a bit more accuracy because it's hard to trace out a perfectly straight line. There's our side seam. And here is the bottom seam of our back. Now, of course, this is a commercial pattern, so it includes uh, 5 8 inch seam allowances all the way around. Um, so I'm gonna actually mark out the seam allowances um, starting at the shoulder. So I'm using my ruler. I've lined up that cut edge of my pattern piece with a 5 8 inch marking on my ruler. And I'm gonna draw a line and that indicates my actual sewing seam. Now I'm gonna want to um, overlap my front and back bodice pieces at the shoulder because we don't want a seam in our collar at the shoulder. But if I just overlap them by one seam allowance, that's not correct. I need to overlap both seam allowances so the stitching line for the front is overlapping the stitching line for the back. So the way that I do that is I've already drawn one seam allowance in from the cut edge. And if I do that again, this time, I could either mark 5 eighths from that stitching line or one and one quarter inches, which is two seam allowances from the cut edge. And I'm gonna mark that on the back shoulder. Hopefully everyone's following along with me. We have our back piece traced out. We've marked the seam allowances twice for the shoulder. Now, if I take my front pattern piece, um, I'm going to line up the cut edge of the shoulder with that second uh, seam allowance. And once I've done that, I can trace out the front pattern piece. Again, just carefully marking the curve of the front neck then I'm gonna right, do the curve of the armhole. I'm gonna mark the center front at the neck, the center front near the waist. This is a bit of a curve at the waist, so I'm just gonna mark that carefully. Again, it's not super crucial because we're only focusing on the neck and shoulder, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, I'm just marking the top and bottom of the side seam and I think that's everything. So I'll remove the pattern piece. I'm going to draw the center front with a ruler and the side seam. So now as you can see we have our back and front connected at the shoulder. The stitching line is overlapping. We have our neck edge here, we have our armhole here. So we're gonna be drawing our collar in this portion. Um, I think that's about we're gonna, what we're gonna do for this cut, and then we can move on and I'll show you how to draft the collar. So before we start drafting the collar, there are a couple of markings that I want to transfer onto our little um, pattern that we're making. And one of those is actually the center back. 
On this pattern, there's a bit of an overlap at the back because there are buttons. So I'm gonna indicate the center, the actual center, because this is where the collar will meet in the back. I'm gonna indicate that at the top and bottom of the pattern piece. Then I'm gonna use my ruler to connect those. And I'm gonna write down that that is the center back so I don't forget later. The next thing I wanna do, again, we're focusing on this area where we're gonna be drafting our collar from the center back to the center front. But I need to know where the collar is actually gonna rest because a lot of this pattern gets eaten up by seam allowances. So I'm gonna use my ruler, um, looking at the 5 8 marking on my ruler, and indicate the stitching line on my pattern. Because if I drafted my collar um, thinking <laughs> that all of these seam allowances were, were part of it, I will be very sad when my collar is much smaller than anticipated. So if we mark our seam allowances, we can draft the collar to scale. So I just kept moving my ruler around. Um, this doesn't need to be a, a nice smooth line. Um, we're never gonna be cutting on that line, so we have a nice smooth edge where we're cutting, so that's fine. And then um, keep in mind, we also have a seam allowance at the armhole. So the, the, um, this gets lost when we're sewing as well. So we don't need to do the whole armhole but we are going to indicate our 5 8 of inch seam allowance close to that shoulder seam to give us a better idea of what the actual bodice is once it's sewn. So again, just moving my ruler to show really now from here to here is the actual width of the shoulder seam once the garment is sewn. So we want our collar to end somewhere in this area. Um, so now that we've done that, we can start actually drafting the collar. So keep in mind that the collar, you can make it as big or small as you want. We're kind of doing kind of a very classic Peter Pan collar. Again, this is for a children's uh, garment. So um, we're going to come about two thirds of the way into the shoulder seam. So it's not going right to the um, armhole, um, but it'll kind of give us a nice, um, uh, nice size collar. So about two thirds, I'm just eyeballing it. So this is about kind of where I want my collar to extend on the shoulder. Um, and then we're going to focus on the point right here. So we're in from the neck edge by one seam allowance and we're looking at the actual stitching line. So that's an important point right here. Now I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to line it up on the stitch line and I'm going to measure down giving myself a guideline for how um, deep we want the collar to go in the back. And for that, um, what I've kind of worked out ahead of time is we want about two and three quarter inches. So one, two and three quarter inches. So I've got a point here now. I'm going to just with my ruler line it up with the center back and then I'm going to draw a line 90 degrees across going through that point that I indicated. So we don't want our collar to drop below this point. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, um, from this point at the shoulder uh, seam, we've gone two and three quarter inches um, at a 90 degree angle from the shoulder seam. Now we're gonna work on the front. This time, we're actually going to draw a line down that is parallel to the center front. So I'm just going to line up my ruler with the center front and then also the edge of the ruler with that point on our shoulder seam. 
and I'm going to draw a line down. So now we have a line that is parallel to our center front coming from our shoulder point. And we would like our collar to be a little bit longer in the front. So we're going to actually, from that shoulder point, we're going to go down three and a half inches. And that will be the guideline when we draw our collar to go through that point, up through the point at the shoulder seam, through the point in the back, and then back up to the center back. So to do that, just keep in mind, um, this is this going to be the seam allowance for the collar, but the actual collar is going to start one seam allowance from the top cut edge. So this is actually the point where the collar is going to sit. So I'm going to um, draw a 60 degree or 30 degrees from the center front. Um, I mean, you can use a, a protractor if you want to, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to draw a line, a nice curve that goes to that point that we wanted for the depth of the collar in the front. I'm going to continue that curve up toward the shoulder seam. We can fix this later. We're giving ourselves a bit of a guideline. Um, again, you could use a French curve. I'm doing this um, eyeballing it. I'll kind of fix it a little bit later, so I'm happier with the um, seam line. So I'm going to continue from the shoulder seam, a nice curve down to the point that we marked for the depth of the back. And then again, we're going up to the center back, one seam allowance from the cut edge. And again, kind of at like a 30 degree angle to the center back. We're going to draw a nice curve to that point. So I think I'm pretty happy with what's happening in the back. I feel like it's coming to a bit of a point here. So we're just going to extend the curve at the front. Just give it a bit more width here. And a nice smooth line. I'm going to erase that line so I don't think it's anything. So this may take a bit of practice and like I said you may want to do a collar that extends a little bit deeper on the bottom, maybe a collar that goes all the way out, out to the arm hole edge. You could do something that comes to a point. Uh, you could do something way skinnier, smaller, subtler. Um, we're not into subtlety here. Um, so practice, have fun, um, customize the collar shape to your um, liking, and then we can uh, continue. I will show you how to add the seam allowance. So to add the seam allowances to our collar pattern, we know that we already have the seam allowance at the neck edge because that's been included in the bodice pattern. So we're going to use our ruler um, starting from the center front. We're going to add 5 eighths of an inch and extend that cut edge. I'm lining up the ruler with the center front. So we've got a perfect little 90 degree angle at the front of our collar. Then I'm going to use my ruler to start adding the seam allowance to my curve, the curve of the front edge of the collar. This is a bit painstaking, but it's worth it, making sure that your seam allowance is nice and accurate. So it's kind of a dotted line that we're doing. We're not worrying about kind of having a nice smooth edge yet. Now I'm continuing to the back of the collar. Again, still using the 5 8 inch on my ruler, We're just about at the center back. We're going to do the same thing that we did in the front. We have the seam allowance already covered here. From the center back, we're going to indicate a 5 8 seam allowance to the center, and that line is perfectly um, parallel to the center back. So here we have our pattern piece. This is the actual collar 
Now we have added the seam allowance all the way around the curved edge and of course we already have the seam allowance included at the neck edge. So if you'd like, um, you can, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to join um, these kind of dotted lines with a black marker. So hopefully you can see the cutting line of the collar a little more clearly. We'll get a nice tight photo of this as well. So you can see the finished collar pattern. I'm also going to just trace over that cut edge of the neckline as well, so that's really clear. So this black line indicates the cutting line for our collar. So one last thing that I forgot to add um, before we move on is we need a grain line for this pattern piece so we know um, how it lines up with the fabric when we're cutting it out. Now we had drawn this line to indicate the depth of the collar in the front, and that line was parallel to the center front of our bodice. So I'm just going to kind of um, continue that line right through the back and that will be our grain line. So the grain at the front of the collar will be on grain with the front uh, bodice and I'm going to write that that's the grain line right on here so I don't forget. Now what we need to do is because this is a removable collar um, for people that want to make it a removable collar, um, we're going to draft kind of like a little um, insert that kind of tucks into um, the neckline to hold the collar in place. Um, but I think the easiest thing to do is to cut out the collar and then we'll trace it out and then use the collar piece to draft the little insert. So as you can see, I have cut out the pattern piece. We have our perfect little collar piece here. Uh, with the grain line indicated so we know what to do when we are cutting. Um, what we want to do now is create the pattern piece for the little kind of uh, facing that will be tucked into the collar. Um, so the collar is going to, come, when it's stitched, it's going to, the two pieces in the front are going to join at the center front. So remember, on our pattern piece, we have the center front indicated here. So this little line of our collar, I'm going to actually line that up with the edge of my paper. And that will be the center fold of our little insert. From that point, I'm going to trace out the neck edge. Now this is the cutting line of the neck edge, so this already includes the seam allowance. I'm going to transfer the center, uh, center back line that we have indicated on the collar onto my paper at the top edge and the lower edge of the collar. And then I'm just going to just continue drawing the collar edge. So just to go over what we've done, we've taken the center front um, of the bodice um, that we've transferred from the collar, lined it up with the edge of our paper. This will become the center front of our little insert. And then we've transferred the cutting line of the neck edge onto our paper. We've indicated the center back line of the collar, again where the back of the collar will join at the center and then we've just kind of traced a little bit of the extra collar. So we're going to remove that piece. Now I want to draw the line of the center back. Just like that. I'm going to indicate that center back. Now with the little insert, we need some overlap at the back so that we can put in a little snap, um, stitch in a snap that's actually going to hold it in place. Now, they can't just butt together and snap, they have to overlap so that we have space for the snap. So we're going to use the seam allowance that we've already included 
with our collar as the overlap. And we're just gonna add a little bit extra. So from the center back, I can actually fit about an inch on my paper. And that will be the cutting line. So it's gonna give us a bit of overlap plus a seam allowance at the center back. So I'm gonna continue the neck edge. I've lined up my ruler with the center back and I'm gonna draw a, a line at 90 degrees to that line. So this now becomes the stitching line for our insert. Now I've predetermined that I think the insert with seam allowances, if we do about two and three quarter inches, that will allow for a seam allowance at the top and the bottom of the insert and a deep enough insert that will actually hold the collar in place. So what I'm gonna do is with that information, two and three quarter inches, I'm going to use my ruler and basically draw a line two and three quarter inches from the cut neck edge all the way around the collar. It's just like adding a seam allowance, but just in a much bigger scale. Again, this doesn't have to be a perfect line. We'll kind of fix it up. You can either do it, fix it up by hand, or if you have a French curve, you can use your French curve. So we're just about at the back here, two and three quarter inches. I didn't want to make it too deep because I know uh, this is for a child and kids might be a little bit fussy about having something really bulky kind of tucked into their neck. So here we have, I'm just going to kind of connect those dots and that will be the cut edge of the insert. So we want the insert to be one single piece. So this will be cut on the fold. I'm gonna indicate CF, meaning center front. We've already indicated the center back. I'll just indicate that as CB. We have an overlap and a seam allowance at the back. So hopefully you can see this pattern piece. I'll go over it um, in Sharpie. So it's really clear on camera what our pattern piece for the insert looks like. So there we have the finished pattern piece for the insert um, that I'm ready to cut out. So once we have our pattern pieces ready, I've cut out the insert, so that's ready to go. Um, we're ready to start cutting out our fabric. And of course, I always start with the most fun part first. So I'm using this beautiful eyelet um, with the little fish motif. The little eyes of the fish are the little holes for the eyelet. It's really, really sweet. Now, what I've decided is we're just gonna use the eyelet for the actual part of the collar that shows. Um, because the eyelet has the embroidery on it, if we use that for the insert that's more against the kid's skin, um, or an adult too who may be more sensitive to the um, texture of the eyelet, um, we're just gonna use a nice soft fabric for that. So nobody's gonna complain about their collar being itchy or scratchy. Um, so all we need to do is cut out two pieces, a left and a right for the collar um, in the eyelet. Now we have indicated the grain line on our pattern piece, of course. So I'm gonna line up that grain line with the selvage of the fabric. Now notice that I'm doing the placement very close to the selvage. Um, because I'm in love with this fabric and I wanna be able to use it in the future. So if I cut close to the selvage, I've got all of this fabric close to the folded edge um, to use later and it'll be a nice big chunk. So if you're you know, in love with the fabric too, make sure that you're cutting it very frugally and efficient. So like I said, I'm lining up the grain line with the selvage. I'm gonna apply some pins to hold it in place while I'm cutting it out. Now, if you're working with a fabric that doesn't have any texture or embroidery, of course, you can do the top and the underside of the collar in the same fabric. So then you would cut 
um, the collar out twice in the fabric so you have a left and right top and bottom. So keep that in mind if that's what you are doing. So I will just quickly cut this out and then I'll show you how to cut out the underlining and the insert pieces and the interfacing. Lots of cutting out to do, but it's small pieces so it goes quickly. So here we have our main collar piece cut out. I'm going to need this pattern piece um, to cut out the underlining and the kind of under collar. So I'm just going to remove the pins and get that pattern piece. I'll set my collar pieces in the eyelet aside. So let's grab our underlining and that is the lightweight cotton lawn. So this isn't going to add any bulk or stiffness, it's just going to make sure that we can't um, see our seam allowances um, through the sheer eyelet fabric. So that's why we've chosen this nice lightweight, it's almost sheer. Um, this is the fabric for the underlining. So we really just need, th need this, again, a left and a right to go under the eyelet um, for the top of the collar. So I'm gonna grab the same pattern piece that I used for the collar. Um, again, I'm gonna be frugal with my layout here, and I'm going to line up the grain line with the selvage. So now we have the underlining cut out. I'm gonna remove the pins because I still need the pattern for the interfacing. So this is a fusible interfacing. It's a woven, um, it's called Presto on our website if you're looking for that. Now I'm only cutting out two of these. I don't wanna make the collar too stiff, but this will be fused to the under collar. So we just need two pieces, a left and a right. While I'm cutting out the interfacing, I will also need um, to cut out interfacing in our insert as well to give it more stability, keep it from stretching out of shape. So with the width of the interfacing that I have, I have just enough room to line up the center fold of the insert with the folded edge of the interfacing. So I'll pin that folded edge to the fold line on my pattern piece. That's the interfacing for the insert. So here I have the interfacing for the collar pieces, and then I'm gonna move on to the main fabric for the insert and the underside of the collar. As I mentioned before, uh, we are not using the eyelet for the underside of the collar or for the insert, so we are gonna be using the beautiful Belvedere cotton. It's a nice, smooth, almost like a sateen finish um, that will be nice and smooth against the skin. So I've got a piece here we're going to be, like I said, using this for the underside of the collar. So I have my collar piece. <clears throat> and this is going to be both layers of the um, insert. Uh, one of the layers will be interfaced, um, but we will need two pieces for the insert cut on the fold. So let's do those first because they're going to be cut on a fold. So I'm going to fold my fabric, um, bringing the selvage in toward the fabric. And I'm going to give myself just enough room to cut one of those out. Again, being efficient with our layout. I'm gonna line up the center fold edge with the fold of my fabric, cut it out. And I'm gonna do exactly the same process a second time to get the second layer. We have both pieces of the insert done. 
So now we're going to do the two pieces that we need, a left and a right, for the under collar. And I'm just going to fold the fabric. This time we don't need to use a folded edge. Lining up the grain line. I do have a fold in the fabric, but we're not cutting on the fold. There we have it. With that piece, all of our cutting is done. We are ready to start kind of basting the underlining, applying the interfacing, um, and we can do that next. So here we are with the ironing board. Uh, we're going to do some um, application of the interfacing that we need. So I have one um, piece of the insert um, that we're going to fuse. So I also have one piece of interfacing. Um, we're using fusible interfacing. So if you're new to sewing, there's always going to be a smooth side to the interfacing and kind of a gritty side. Um, and that grit is actually glue. So we want to face that to the back of our fabric that we're using. So this um, piece of the insert that I have is that beautiful sateen that we talked about. And there is one really smooth side. So that is the face of the fabric. So we're going to apply the interfacing to the back of the fabric. So I'm just going to lay that flat on my ironing board. I'm going to take my piece of interfacing that's exactly the same size. And we're going to line up all the cut edges. Make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Again, the glue side of the interfacing is facing the back of the fabric. I have my iron set to a wool setting with steam. Now you can use a press cloth if you'd like, if you're worried about um, any of the glue potentially transferring onto your iron. I'm pretty confident that this uh, interfacing won't do that. So I'm going to use uh, do this without a press cloth. So I'm going to just apply the iron to one section and I'm going to hold it for about five to ten seconds. I'm not sliding the iron around, I'm just holding it. And then when I'm ready, think that it's fused, I'm going to lift my iron away. Now it is hot, so be careful. And then I'm going to move my iron to another section. I'm applying a bit of pressure. Again, the setting is at a wool setting, not the hottest. So what the interfacing is going to do, it's going to give um, a little bit of body, a lot more stability to the fabric. So it's not going to stretch out while we're sewing. So that one's done. Now we are, are also applying interfacing to the piece that is the underside of the collar. And that again is that beautiful, nice, um, smooth sateen. So I have two of the collar pieces and the same piece cut out of the interfacing, applying the glue side down to the back of the fabric. So give it a bit of a touch up from the face. So now that we have our interfacing applied, we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to talk about underlining. Um, that involves a bit of sewing and then once we've got the underlining applied, we can actually sew our collar. So let's talk about underlying. So underlining, <laughs> uh, we have this beautiful eyelet. Now, like I said before, because it's kind of sheer and because of the holes, if we just sewed two pieces together, our seam allowances are gonna show through the sheer fabric. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually apply that lightweight cotton lawn that we have cut out. We're gonna apply that to the back of the fabric. I'm just going to make sure I've got two pieces that match here. Yes. And then what that will do, it'll give kind of a little bit of a barrier so that when we sew our collar, the seam allowances won't show through the sheer um, eyelet fabric. Now the same method uh, will apply to other sheer fabrics like chiffon or voile. Um, it would also apply to lace, you know, you don't want to see all your seam allowances through the sheer lace. So if you apply a lightweight, um, a little bit more opaque fabric, then your seam allowances won't show. It'll also give a little bit more stability, especially with open fabrics like lace, um, that you'll actually have something to stitch into um, when your needle goes into the fabric with a really open fabric. Um, 
you know, your needle won't have anything to secure the stitch to. So here we have one layer of eyelet, one layer of the lightweight cotton. We are going to sew them together. We're gonna to base them together. Now what that means is it's kind of loose sewing. We're using a one centimeter seam allowance so that all of the stitching will be within that five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, I'll start from one corner. I'm gonna use a longer stitch length um, because um, this doesn't really need to hold that strongly. We're not actually sewing anything that's gonna have tension on it. And I'm just gonna stitch those two pieces together. Now, if you're a beginner, you probably wanna pin these pieces together. So we've done the outside edge of the collar. Now we're just going to do the inside neck edge. There we go. I'm just going to show you the finished piece. So once they're basted together, we're going to treat these as like one fabric um, that's now less sheer. I'm going to repeat this process for the other side um, of the collar, and then we'll be ready to start sewing our collar together. So once we have both of our collar pieces basted, um, now we can apply, this is the collar, uh, part of the collar that shows, and then as you recall, we have the underside of the collar, uh, that nice, be beautiful, smooth sateen that we've interfaced that will give our collar some body and stability. We're going to apply, um, we're gonna pin those pieces together and then stitch the outside collar edge. So I'll make sure that I've got the right two pieces here. Now this time I am going to apply some pins because this is a little more accurate sewing than what we were doing basting the, um, the underlining to the eyelet. I'm trying to do this so that it's in frame, you can see what we're doing. So again, if you're a beginner, please use as many pins as you are comfortable with. So again, we're just sewing five eighths of an inch around the outside collar, um, outside edge of the collar. Now I'm gonna switch my sewing machine back to a normal stitch length for sewing. So we've gone to 2.5 because we're not basting, we are sewing. So I'm gonna start from the one corner. Again, we're using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can go as slow as you'd like. We're sewing a pretty tight curve, so you want to take it nice and easy. We're going to start with a back stitch. And then we're just going to continue nice and slow around these beautiful curves. We ended with a back stitch. I'm going to remove that from the machine. I'm going to repeat that process for the other side of the collar and then I will show you how to trim and grade your seam allowances. Very important process. So here we have um, one side of the collar. Um, we've got the uh, eyelet stitched to the beautiful interface sateen and I promise I'm going to show you how to grade and trim the seam allowances. Now trimming the seam allowances would just mean um, trimming the whole width of the seam allowance. Um, if we did that with all of the layers that we have, if we trim them all to one length, then when we turned our collar inside out, we would have a big lump where all of those seam allowances end. So grading seam allowances is that we trim them to different widths so that when we turn our collar inside out, um, it's kind of like we have all of the layers really close to the stitching and then it gradually, gradually, it <laughs> gets thinner um, towards the inside of the collar. So that's what we're doing. We're trimming and grading. So let's trim the interfaced piece um, because that's actually two layers. Let's trim that to the narrowest seam allowance, probably about less than a quarter inch. Um, so I'm just gonna use my fabric scissors and I'm cutting through that interfaced fabric, it's that beautiful sateen. 
and I'm cutting about a quarter inch away from my stitches. Also, if we didn't trim or grade our seam allowances with all of these curves, when we turned our collar right side out, all of that bulk of the seam allowances would kind of like wave and pucker and it would create a lot of lumps and it just would be really ugly. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna turn the collar over. We are gonna trim the seam allowance of the kind of eyelet, um, but only maybe about 3 8 of an inch. So kind of close to um, the stitching that we did when we basted the two layers together. So now we've got both of the seam allowances trimmed to different widths. Um, now where the curves are a little bit tighter, um, we're actually going to clip into the seam allowances fairly close to the stitching so that um, when we turn the collar uh, right side out, um, the seam allowances can lay flat. So this is kind of a really gradual curve here um, around where the shoulder is going to be for a collar, but at the um, close to the front and close to the back, um, it's pretty tight curve. So I'm going to clip into the seam allowances at a right angle to the stitching. I'm going pretty close to the stitching, but I definitely do not want to cut right up to the stitching. So I'm just making little snips with the tips of my scissors. So I think that's enough for that tight curve there. I'm going to do some on the other side. Once we've done all of that trimming, grading, and clipping the curves, then we are ready to turn our collar right sides out. If you have a point turner, basically like a little wooden tool that has kind of a pointy edge to it, it's nice and flat, but not too sharp that it's gonna damage your fabric, you could help roll those seam allowances out. So here we have a much better idea of what our little collar is going to look like. I am going to trim, grade, and clip the uh, curves of the other side of the collar, and then I'm going to show you how to do understitching that will keep our collar nice and flat, um, and then we'll move from there. So here's our one half of our little collar piece um, that we have turned right side out. Um, now what we want to do is called understitching and this will help um, make sure that the um, underside of the collar stays to the underside of the collar. So what we need to do is actually kind of open up, kind of get in the collar. So notice the seam allowances here, we want those seam allowances to get stitched toward the under collar, the plain white fabric, not toward the eyelet. So I'm going to just kind of push the seam allowance toward that solid white fabric. And then I'm just going to kind of, it's a little bit tricky to kind of get in there because it's a curve, um, but I'm going to line up the seam where the two fabrics join each other. I've got a little red dot on my um, presser foot just to the right of the needle. I'm going to line up the seam with that point on my presser foot. I'm going to put the needle into the work. Then I'm going to carefully, I hope you can see this because it's kind of inside the collar. I'm going to sew, making sure that the seam allowance is always going to the left toward the solid white fabric. I'm also making sure that the seam is laying perfectly flat and open. Okay, so you're kind of giving a little bit of pressure on the seam, kind of pulling it flat while keeping the seam allowance to the left. You can just do a few stitches at a time because we're going through a curve, so it's a little tricky. I know 
that's probably really hard to see because it's such a small piece because it's a child size. I haven't sewn for kids for a while, so um, it's amazing how small all of the pieces are compared to making adult clothes. See how I'm just kind of doing a few stitches at a time and I'm not going to run into any trouble. I'm just going to open it up a little bit. We're about halfway through. So again, I'm keeping the seam lined up with um, just to the right of the needle, keeping things nice and flat. I know this looks like a tricky step, but if you're ever laundering the collar, if you haven't done this step, it's going to be really hard to press your collar flat after it's washed. So this will help kind of do the work for you to keep the collar from rolling kind of to the front. There we go, I stitched right off the end there. So if I kind of roll this back out, you can kind of see already, even before we press it, that understitching really wants to hold the underside of the collar to the underside of the collar. So I'm going to quickly press that now that I've done the understitching. I'm going to repeat this whole process for the second uh, half of the collar and then we'll be ready to apply the collar either to the garment or to the little insert that we're making. So we have uh, pressed our collar. It's laying beautifully flat. Um, the underside of the collar is definitely staying on the underside and we've got a beautiful kind of rounded edge um, for the eyelet, you'll notice that there's um, at the neck edge, it's also still kind of loose. So we're going to kind of base that closed. I'll just do that quickly. And basting again with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a longer stitch length. We're going to 4.5 for our stitch length. You can pin this together if you'd like. For this children's size collar, it's a very short distance, so I'm not using any pins. I'm going to repeat that for the other side of the collar. Now I've applied little pins, little straight pins, um, to indicate which are the front, um, so I know that these are the front of the collar. If you are at this stage, and you are planning on applying your custom Peter Pan collar directly to a garment, your collar part is done. Um, we have kind of a little mocked up uh, bodice here um, from the dress pattern that we um, copied our, our pattern pieces from. So if you're at this stage and you're gonna be applying the collar directly to the garment, you can Find the center point, the center front of the bodice, and line up the front edge of the collar with that point. You can pin it together, and you can kind of continue to pin around the neck edge. You'll do the same thing with the other side of the collar. So we're starting to get the idea of how this is going to look. Um, so like I said, if you're just applying the collar directly to the garment, you can pin it to the neck edge and then baste it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then continue on with the regular instructions for making the rest of the uh, garment. We are not doing that. <laughs> we are going to be making a removable collar. So I'm going to continue to show you how to apply these collar pieces to the insert um, that, so that we'll be able to apply the collar to multiple garments. So like I said, uh, we're moving on to applying our collar to the insert. Um, one thing that I meant to do when we cut out the insert was actually transfer um, the marking of the center back and the center front. Um, to mark the center front, that's pretty easy. We're just gonna fold our insert piece in half 
then we're going to make a little clip at the neck edge at the fold. And then to mark the center back, we're going to keep the piece folded. We're going to put our pattern piece back on the collar. Now we're just going to make a clip into that neck edge at the center back. I'm going to do that at the bottom too, just in case you want to line that up when we're sewing the two pieces together. So I've done that for the uninterfaced piece. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the piece that we have applied the interfacing to. So once we have those markings, I'm going to go back to my insert piece that doesn't have interfacing on it. And I'm going to line up the neck edge of the insert with the neck edge of the collar. As you recall, I said we put pins that indicate the front of the collar. So these are the fronts at the center front of the insert. And then these are the backs that are going to be lined up with the center back of the insert. So I'm going to pin the collar to the insert at the front. I'm going to continue putting in more pins. I think I will line up the center back first. So I've got that right at the edge of the collar with that clip that we just made. Apply a pin. So now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. We are going to machine baste the collar to the neck edge and then we'll be able to move on to finishing the insert. So we still have our machine set to a basting stitch which is what we're going to do. We're going to start at that back center edge Again, with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. No back stitching required because we're just basting. And it's still pretty tight curves. Look at this tiny little size 4 neck. <laughs> it's very tight. We're moving the pins as we go. We want to take special care that the two front collar edges are like butted right up against each other. I just continued basting right off the edge of the insert. One more pin to remove. So there we have it. Again, we're getting to, to get an idea of how this is going to be finished. Um, now we're ready to apply the um, interface piece of the insert to this whole project. All right, so we're at another tricky part of our project. Um, you're welcome. Uh, we've got our collar basted to the single layer of our insert fabric and now we're going to take the interfaced layer of our fabric. We're going to, um, we have the right side of the collar facing up. We're going to take that nice sateen side of the um, insert and apply it to that. So we're going to be lining up all the edges. Now basically, we're going to be stitching around the outside edges of these pieces, but we need to leave an opening in order to be able to turn it inside out. But also, if we just stitched this outside edge, we would be catching our collar in it as well, which of course would make it impossible to turn it inside out. So we're going to be applying pins to these outside edges, and while we do that, we're going to be scooching the collar out of the way so that we can actually stitch just the two layers of the insert together. Um, I think one way that will make it easier to line everything up is I'm going to fold this piece in half and I'm going to make a clip on the outside edge at the center front. I'm going to do the same thing with the piece that we've already stitched the collar to, fold that in half. 
make a clip at the center front. So we'll be able to line up the edges um, of the insert at the center front. So let's maybe just do that first, since we just made those clips. So I'm gonna apply a pin. I'm just going through the two layers of the insert. Let's go to the center back and apply some more pins there. And again, there's no collar in the way, so we don't have to worry about catching the collar in there. And again, we have markings at the center back. You can see there's a little notch there. So we'll line those up. Lining up the center front perfectly. Now in this case, we are stitching through all the layers because the collar is already basted to one of those pieces. Okay, so that's what we have so far. The center front is pinned, the center back is pinned, the inside neck edge is pinned. So now we need to pin these outside edges, but we need to first roll back the collar pieces so that we can, they'll be out of the way when we put the pins in, and they'll be out of the way when we do the sewing. So as you go, the next part will be a little bit easier because you just need to scooch over the next bit of collar. I'm gonna repeat that process for the other side of the collar here. I think I'm pretty happy with that. It's looking like a little bit like a, a lifesaver buoy <laughs> um, or a, a partly open donut. Um, but basically with all of the collar kind of pushed out of the way, we're ready to stitch around this edge. Um, we're gonna leave part of it open, like I said, in order to be able to turn it inside out. I think we'll do that closer to kind of the back edge so that when we top stitch it closed, it doesn't really show. Um, so we're ready to move to the sewing machine and stitch that. So like I said, we're gonna leave an opening to turn everything inside out. So we're gonna start stitching kind of close to this pin here. I'm going to place the needle into the work. I'm gonna remove that pin. Now the whole time I'm sewing this, I'm really making sure that the eyelet part of the collar is out of the way of my stitching. I don't want to catch the collar in there. So I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to switch my stitch length back to a normal length. I have to say I'm really loving the feel of this Belvedere cotton. So as we get close to this corner, I'm gonna give you a little trick that I've shared on previous videos. Now we want to pivot at the 5 8 of an inch um, at the corner, but we actually wanna stop sewing like maybe one stitch before that. So I'm leaving my needle in my work. I'm raising the presser foot. I'm gonna turn my work at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna do one single stitch just by walking with my hand on the machine. So that stitch was done at a 45 degree angle. And what that will allow is when we turn everything inside out, we're gonna be able to turn it to a really nice sharp point. So that's a little tip for you, bonus. We're gonna do the same thing at the top at this corner one stitch will be on a 45 degree angle and then we will continue now try and make sure you're kind of like feeling that the collar is sitting nice and flat at the inside edge um, it should be we've basted it in place but because we've kind of bunched everything in it may be doing a little bit of bunching near the neck edge too so just make sure everything feels nice and flat before you stitch over it
Okay, so here's where we started stitching. So we're gonna leave maybe about three inches open in order to turn the whole thing inside out. So that's our sewing done. Um, like we did before, uh, we're going to trim and grade our seam allowances. We do need to clip this really sharp curve of the neckline too. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Um, I've shown you how to do it already. Uh, and then I'll show you the point where we can turn this whole thing right side out. And then we can do the last little steps of kind of closing up that opening and applying the snap to the center back. So here we are back at the ironing board. Um, as I mentioned before, I have trimmed, graded, I have clipped the inside curves, actually the outside curves too. Um, this will help um, make the curves lay nice and flat. I also have trimmed the corners, kind of at every little corner. I've trimmed at a 45 degree angle, um, about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. I don't want to go clip too close to the stitching because I don't want to create a hole. So our weird little life preserver is ready to turn right side out. We've got our opening here. Now please note, very important, that I haven't trimmed or graded the seam allowance at that opening. I need to know that I've got a full seam allowance um, there so that I can turn it and slip stitch it closed um, precisely. So this might take a little bit of work. We're going to reach inside to pull the collar to the outside. Actually having the little collar pieces to grab onto makes this much easier. So you're going to have to need a little bit of patience to do this. I'll see what's happening here. We're going to turn those center backs around. Again, if you have a point turner, you can get into those corners at the center back. I don't have a point turner on me, so I'm just going to roll those around, kind of forcing those nice sharp corners with my fingers and that was actually did a really good job. Remember how we stitched on the 45 degree angle, that one stitch, and that really helps us get a nice 90 degree angle corner at those points. I'm gonna do the other center back here, kind of roll it around between my thumb and fingers. Now it would be impossible to kind of get in there and do the under stitching to keep this from uh, rolling around. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of roll the seam allowances around with our fingers and then press. And the pressing should just be enough to hold it like that. So we have the little Peter Pan collar. We have the little insert that's going to sit inside the neck edge. We are going to be slip stitching um, our opening closed, so we're going to turn back the seam allowance um, of those two edges and we're going to slip stitch that closed. Um, we'll, we do have a slip stitch video, I think we'll put the link in the description so you can find that if you need some information on slip stitching. And then of course the way our collar sits at the center back, there is a little bit of an overlap. See how the at the back it extends beyond the center. So we're gonna stitch two parts of the snap, uh, one to each side of the center back so that we can snap it closed. So I'm gonna continue to press. We're gonna close um, the opening uh, with a slip stitch. I'm going to apply the snap, and then before you know it, I'll be able to show you the finished product. Hey everybody, um, this is the big reveal. I can't stop holding it, it's so cute. Um, I love that it's so versatile that it can be added to a different garment and maybe put in with a little t-shirt dress, or this could be really good for little boys, little girls. Um, again, you can customize it for adults, for costumes, so many ideas. 
Anyway, again, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you are enjoying this content and want to see more content about sewing, costumes, home decor, quilting, even knitting, um, that's all here on this channel. Um, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any fun vid projects like this. Um, please follow us on our other socials, on Facebook and Instagram. We have uh, specific content for them as well. So again, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you've seen any products in this video that you like, please feel free to find them on our website at fabricana.com, as well as tons of other stuff. If you are making a dress for a little girl, a little boy's dress, or even a dress for yourself and you want to apply the Peter Pan collar, we have lots of great fabrics that would be perfect for a dress, blouse, whatever you're looking for. Um, so again, I thank you so much. And before I go, I just want to say like I always do, so true and be you.